with this workshop, I'll start off with a few uh, lecture style um, presentations. And this is mostly because I know there are a few trainees in the room and I want to get everyone up to speed on a few things. But the meat of this workshop is going to be in the activities. And so once we get through those, the afternoon and most of tomorrow is going to be working on activities with your teams. And then there will also be a final project that we will talk about closer to lunch today, and then we will split up into those teams later. So hopefully everyone knows this, but um, proteins are made up of amino acids. Um, the amino acids are kind of split into these four main groups, and they can interact with each other in various ways. So we have nonpolar, charged, polar, uh, positively and negatively charged. Um, and we'll talk more about how these interact with each other later. But just to get everyone refreshed with what proteins look like. So here's what uh, the primary structure of proteins looks like. Um, amino acids are connected by peptide bonds. And each amino acid sort of has these planes where the atoms exist. And so a lot of times when you're looking at protein structures, you want to make sure that it kind of follows these specific rules, especially if you're designing. Um, so just something to keep in mind are the angles and bond lengths that are kind of allowed here. And of course, we have proteins as a string of amino acids, and then they can kind of form these various types of structures. So secondary structures, the alpha helices, and beta strands, and loops. And then the, these secondary structures come together to form tertiary structures. And then finally, the domains coming together um, forms these quaternary structures. And then I also want to give a little bit of a deep learning refresher for some people who may not be as familiar. Um, so with deep learning, the main um, sort of workhorse is data. Um, and I think it's important to talk about how we split the data and how the models are trained. Um, so usually people will take their data and split it into three sets, training, validation, and test. You can do like 80, 10, 10 for these. There are some other options, but I think that's the most common one. With the training data, you're going to train your model. Um, in your model, there will be a loss function. So this is kind of telling the model, OK, you made a prediction. How close is that to the actual um, prediction that we want you to make? And then we're kind of pushing the loss to be as low as possible. Um, the model consists usually of these layers. Um, and these layers are stacked up against each other. So the data goes through each layer and gets further and further nonlinearly transformed. And then once you have trained the model, you kind of want to test it. And so there's two ways to test the model. One is during the iterative process of training, and that's what the validation set is used for. And then once you're all done training the model and it performs well on both the training and validation sets, you want to go ahead and test it on the test set. And this is kind of like the final test for your model. And this is going to be like data it's never seen before, so it's also um, seeing how well it can generalize to things it hasn't seen before. 